trust our friends, we trust our husband, our wives, our children, and they all fail us. But Jesus never fails. At this time, we can invite Ms. Martin McKenzie, the least, to come to read our scripture. It's taken from Psalms 91, verses 1 to 12. And then we will continue in our worship with our congregation of Him. The Lord is my shepherd. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Thou turnest man to destruction and sayest, Return, ye children of men. For a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday, when it is past and as a watch in the night. Thou carriest them away as with flood. They are as asleep in the morning. They are like grass which grow it up. In the morning it flourishes and grow it up. In the evening it is cut down and withereth. For we are consumed by thy anger and by thy wrath are we troubled. Thou hast set our iniquities before thee our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years in a tale that is told. The days of our years are threescore years and ten, and if by reason of strength they be fourscore years, yet, it, yet is their strength labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. For who knoweth the power of thine anger? Ever according to their, their fear, so is thy wrath. Verse 12, so teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but God's word will stand forever. Amen. Amen. Congregation, please stand as we sing our hymn. Lord, my shepherd.
Christina Johnson, cousin Deaconess Patricia Thurston from the Mount Nebo to bring condolences in that order, please. Reverend Dr. Charles E. Rowe and members of the Gospel Present, family and friends of our beloved friend and brother, Mr. Carl Sidney Johnson. Ladies and gentlemen, a very pleasant good morning. First, on behalf of the Executive Chairman of the Water and Sewage Corporation, the Honorable Adrian Gibson MP, and the Board of Directors, the General Manager, Mr. Albert Donaldson, and the Executive Management Team, and staff of the corporation to extend our deepest sympathies to you, the real family, on the passing of your beloved father, brother, father-in-law, brother-in-law, grandfather, great-grandfather, uncle, brother and friend, Harold Johnson. We join with all of those gathered here this morning in praying that Almighty God will bless and comfort you, that he will strengthen and console you and that his love will bring you inner peace and joy during this year time of bereavement. In preparing for the day, I asked a few present and former colleagues their thoughts about our former beloved colleague and friend, and they all gave many very positive attributes that so well described the Harold so many of us knew, but there was one theme that everyone focused on. Harold Johnson had a big heart. He made all of us feel extremely welcomed, he made all of us feel special, and he always was prepared to give, whether it was a compliment, wise counsel, or indeed to give monetary support for a friend in need. My very first interaction with Harold was in 1992 as a summer student in the Corporations Engineering Department on the second floor of the Ministry of Public Works Building. Just beyond the Engineering Department, at, a, at the end of the wing, was the drawing office, and Harold was the department head. Ever the classic, Debonair gentleman, I was immediately struck by his welcoming demeanor, his smile, and his laugh. Although he was quiet in his management, he was welcoming in character, and immediately, those of us who were summer students found a place of comfort, and in many ways, that commenced our love for the corporation. Later, as a young engineer at the corporation, whether at work, some special event, or some social gathering at his home, Harold served as an example and as a mentor for many of us and quietly and discreetly provided very valuable counsel and advisement as we progressed through our early twenties. He inspired all of us to smile, to laugh, to dream, to enjoy this brief journey, to travel. Indeed, many of us included Las Vegas on our travel agenda after listening to Harold recount his many adventures in that city. As we grew older, Carl attended our weddings and served as a referee for many a young couple who visited his home for the preparation of drawings for the future marital home. Carl had to endure many a late evening as couples would wrangle in front of him over their views for their future home and even had to feel secret calls from spouses seeking to win him to their side or seeking to persuade him to convince the other spouse that they should change their position. When I look back on it, I can only smile and imagine what must have been going through his mind. Although he may have personally known one spouse longer and better than the other, he was exceptionally fair and diligently worked to mediate the differences to achieve a win-win solution for the young family. Harold knew the importance and role of the home and the life of the family, and therefore exhibited extreme patience with the couples and even the young children who would use his office as a playground. Many of our families are recipients of beautiful homes today designed by the master architect who lays before us. And as a corporation, Harl left the signature on our present head office at number 38, University Drive. For many years, he prepared wonderful visions for various head office options at various locations around your province, but none of those unfortunately came to pass. Finally, in the mid-1990s, when the old Shell building on the then Thompson Boulevard became available, Harold shepherded the corporation through the, through the massive renovations and moved to our corporate home at the now E. George Moss building and our early years there. Ever the great space master, after he formally left the corporation, he 
return from time to time to assist with various projects, creating happy spaces for very small spaces and with extremely limited budgets. Despite his early departure from the corporation, many of us remain in touch with Harold, for many of us wait in collaboration with him on special projects even up to very recent times. Ladies and gentlemen, as we gather here this morning to bid our weekly farewell to our former colleague and lifelong friend, we are thankful to Almighty God that He has blessed us by sending Harold Sidney Johnson into our lives for a season. While his time with us at the corporation was only for a limited season, his influence and his example on our lives as a husband, a father, a professional, and a good man will last a lifetime. Before us lay is a very good man. Yes, indeed, a great man to many of us. The greatest architect and master of us all has called him home to that celestial mansion where the rooms are all perfectly designed, where there is more than sufficient space for all of us who will accept his invitation, and where, should I dare say, there is no need for any electricity, for that mansion in and out will be kept bright day and night by him who is the light of the world. May the soul of our beloved friend and brother, Harold Sidney Johnson, rest in eternal peace.
But they knew that quite well. It is difficult for me to speak this morning because Harold's life and my life were so interwoven because we shared basically the same challenges and struggles. When I say Harold was extraordinary, I mean you have to look at not what he achieved, but the hand he was dealt with and how he played that hand. You see, a child who goes off to school and has a father and a mother who gives them everything, he doesn't have to do much to achieve much. But when you came or would have come from a settlement like the Obor, a settlement that many would say could anything good come out of the Obor, then you know that you, the game is on. You have to fight for everything that you get. And Harold was a fighter. God has blessed him and blessed him abundantly because Harold knew at the earlier stage that he had to choose a life, a life that would land him where he needed to be. And he got there. He was not just an architect. Harold was a builder in many ways because he built the community of Lobo in the sense that we can dream and we have something to go after. We can see what he has achieved. So we know greatness is possible by those who have achieved greatness before. So his legacy is something that stands out and all of us could learn. But God smiled on him because God armed him with the ammunition that he needed to fight the war that he fought. So even when he became successful, his health challenges were right there. And he had to deal with them. And I say to my dear many and my cousins over here, you must go on. You must stay together. You must continue to love each other. Because the only thing that we have that we can hold on to and say that is ours is our family. That's what God gave us. Harold and I didn't see each other a lot. We talked on the phone. And we didn't have to see each other because when you know where love is, you don't have to be with love. You know exactly where it is. You know where to find it. You know what it means because you're part of something really special. And Harold was everything special. I want to close by saying that it's not where you come from. It is not what you do. It's how you do what you do. So Harold showed us very plain and simple. If you are willing to do what is necessary to be done, then there is no limit to where you can go. That is what the spirit of the body that lies in front of you, that's the spirit that tells you how you can be successful. You place God in front, you formulate a plan, and you follow that plan. And if you make the first move, God will make the second. Farewell, my brother.
Harold Johnson. He was a very quiet, friendly person. And most of all, God said it. With all his physical and medical challenges, even the death of his wife, Sybil, he never stopped worshiping here with us. He will be missed by all of us. And I have no doubt in my mind if Brother Johnson had the opportunity to leave some encouraging words with us, his family, and friends, he would have said something like this, miss me, but let me go. When I, have, when I come to the end of the road and the sun has set for me, I want no rights in a gloom-filled room. Why cry for a soul set free? Miss me a little, but not too long. And not with your head bowed low. Remember the love that we once shared. Miss me, but let me go. But this is a journey that we all must take, and each must go alone. It's all a part of the Master's plan, a step on the road to home. When you are lonely and sick of heart, Go to the friends we know and bury your sorrows in doing good deeds. Miss me, but let me go. He will be missed by all of us here at Mondego. Thank you. 